I believe the latter. That sin is actually debt. Okay. So whenever you see the word sin, just change that to debt. And I'm going to show you why. Hold on. Okay, right here, Leviticus 23, verse 19. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering. Okay, let's replace that word sin with debt. All right, and read it again. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a debt offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. For those of you who know anything about commerce, in commerce, when you have an adversary, the first thing you're supposed to do is go to peace. The, the script also tells about that. We'll go over that in a minute. But the first thing you do is go to peace, which this talks about the sacrifice of a peace offering. Then it says, for a debt offering, right? Right here it says sin offering, but for a debt offering, uh, you're supposed to offer up one kid of the goats, right? So this is basically saying, okay, well, you created a debt. Now you need to make an offering for that debt, okay? So the and sin that they're talking about is actually a debt evil. that was Why created. And in order to compensate or clear the books of that debt, you need to make an offering, Okay. This portion is really only talking about commerce. It's talking about making an offering for your debt and then coming to peace. You know, you come to peace by making the offering. That's basically all it's talking about, folks. But right here, they throw you off because they talk about offering one kid of the goats, right? Now, don't you run around calling your children kids? And are they supposed to be the offering or Let's go and find out what the offering is really supposed to be. Okay, right here, Leviticus 7 and 29. It says, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, He that offereth the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his oblation unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. Now, this is simply saying, speak unto the children of Israel. Don't sacrifice them as if they were kids. And then saying, he that offered the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his oblation, which oblation is defined as a thing presented or offered to God or a God, right? So now this is a presentment or a thing presented or offered to God, right? Or a God. So right here, we're talking about a presentment or a thing offered to God for your debt. Or in this case, it's codified as being sin, right? Then this presentment is being offered unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. So this thing is being offered to the Lord of the sacrifice. Now, who is that? Think about that. Who would that be that is the Lord of the sacrifice? This is the one that you're taking your uh, debt offering to. You're offering this thing up for debt. Okay, well, let's go ahead and find out, like we started to from the beginning, who this one is really supposed to be that's being sacrificed or offered up as a sacrifice. Let's find that out real quick. All right, right here, John 1 and 29, where it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin. Now, don't forget to replace the word sin with debt. So let's read that again. Which taketh away the debt of the world. So what are they talking about here? They're talking about this one that they call Jesus takes away the debt of the world. Now, most Christians talk about they have a personal relationship with Jesus, right? So if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, 
then that means that you have your own relationship with this entity called Jesus, which is also known as a straw man. And I'm going to show you that at some point, maybe before this is over or at some point, I'm going to show you that Jesus is simply the straw man, which each and every one of us has. OK, hold on. Now, I'm not going to show you in this particular public lesson how to actually apply this straw man and use this sacrifice to help take away your debt or your sin, if that's what you want to call it. But either way, that's what you do. You use the straw man and you make presentment and you take it to the Lord of the sacrifice to have your debt removed. I'm not going to tell you who all these parties are because this is actually private information and I'm not prepared to share it in the public at this particular venture. But if you require any type of assistance on this particular subject matter, I'm able to provide it for you in private. There's actually a lot of information on this particular subject matter codified in the script. I'm not going to go over it all. I'm going to give you a couple more points and we're going to move on. Okay, hold on. All right, 1 Samuel 16 and 5. And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. All right, so sanctified just simply means set apart. So this is what we are to do as far as the relationship between us and the straw. We have to sanctify ourselves from the straw man to identify ourselves as being the flesh and blood natural man or woman and not the fiction known as the straw. Your personal relationship with the sacrifice or the straw man or the Jesus is to be taken up to the Lord of the sacrifice for an offering for debt. You feel me? I'm going to give you one more codified point on this sin situation as it is written in the script and then we're going to move on. Okay, here in Psalms 51, verse 5, it says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Right? It's basically saying, born in sin and shaped by iniquity is, like, is the way that people like to, like to quote this particular verse. But the point being here is that the, the script says, I was shaping in iniquity. Iniquity means immoral or grossly unfair behavior so it's grossly unfair to be shaping in this particular iniquity that they're referring to now the sin again is talking about debt so this system that they've re created in debt is uh grossly unfair that's what this is talking about hold on the bottom line is that it's saying that you was born in sin or born in debt and if you go and check the records, you'll find out that you were born in debt and it was all perpetrated by particular documents that was issued at birth that represents the debt that everybody is in in this bankrupt situation. Okay, but I'm not going to go further into that right now. That's all private information. And like I said before, if you require or you request assistance with this issue, then you can contact me via email and we can discuss it further. By the way, when I made this video, I made it in full video form, but I had to change it for the purposes of being able to present it to you because when I uploaded it to YouTube, they blocked the video saying that uh, NBC is the owner of the video, even though I made the expression that it's uh, U.S. law that provides a remedy for copywritten material if you're making comments and so forth which is part of the disclaimer that you just saw so if you want a copy of this video you can contact me at malikthesheik at gmail.com and i'll see to it that you can get a copy of it all right 